In this video, I will teach you what user scoped custom dimensions are, when to use them in Google Analytics 4, and how to configure them. And now let's take a look at several examples where it makes sense to use user scoped custom dimensions to send that kind of data. So first of all, user scoped custom dimensions represent data that is about a user and that information does not change very often. For example, pricing plan. When a user signs up for your SaaS product, maybe, I would say that for the first month, maybe weeks, that visitor will probably be using a free pricing plan if, of course, your platform allows that. And then later, when that visitor decides to upgrade, then that user's pricing plan might change to something like premium or, I don't know, paid or whatever. And from that moment, for quite some time, the pricing plan will remain as it is. So if you have some parameter about a user and you want to track that in Google Analytics 4, and that parameter's value does not change very often, like, you know, several times a day, then it makes sense to track that data as user scope custom dimensions. Then another example could be user rating. So let's say that your customer, your user is asked after the first two weeks of using your software, how would that user rate your product from one to 10, for example? And then when a user enters the rating, the next time this user will be asked the same question is, let's say after six months or so. So as you can see, there is a pretty solid period of time where the value of the user rating will not change in your database. Then another example could be visitor type. For example, if an administrator logs into his or her account, you can send that information to Google Analytics that this visitor is an administrator. And that way, later in your analysis, you could, for example, exclude this with segments. Now, let's see how can we configure user scope custom dimensions in Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4. Here I have a demo container of Google Tag Manager, and inside of it, I have installed Google Analytics 4, which means that I have a Google tag, and also I have one demo GA4 event tag. If you have no idea how to install GA4 or you have no experience with event tracking, then I will post two links below the video in the description. And one of them is about the installation. The other one is about event tracking. Watch those first and then come back to this video. Anyway, let's go back to this container. And also together with this container, I have a demo website. And let's say that I have asked a developer to push the user's pricing plan to the data layer. And I asked him to do so on every page. Now let's check if the developer has implemented this properly. I will go to Google Tag Manager and click preview. Here I will have to enter the URL of the demo website, click connect. And here I see that the preview mode is connected. And if I go to the preview mode, I will see that one of the data layer pushes here is a message. If I click it and if I expand it, I will see that here I have the pricing plan. Right now I am on a free plan, but if I was a paying user, maybe its value would be premium or paid or something like that. So the developer has done the job correctly. Now I need to send this as a user scoped custom dimension to Google Analytics 4. To do that first, I need to somehow access this value because if I select this message, I go to variables, I will not see anything related to the pricing plan. That's why I need to create a variable that will fetch its value and then I would be able to use it. To do that, let's go to Google Tag Manager, variables, and then in the user defined variables, I will click new variable configuration and then data layer variable. Here I have to enter the precise name of the parameter, which is here. So I will copy it and I will paste it here. Then I will name the variable and click save. To implement user scoped custom dimensions in Google Analytics 4, first we have to send a thing called user property from Google Analytics tracking code to the actual Google Analytics servers. And the most convenient way, in my opinion, would be to use a Google event settings variable. So while we are in the variable section, click new, then variable configuration, and then find Google tag event settings. Here we can set the event parameters because we will later use them as user scoped custom dimensions. So let's expand this. And here I can add a new property. Here we are working with the pricing plan. So let's say that I will name this pricing plan, but you can name it anything you want, like pricing or plan or pricing plan, whatever. Then in the value, we will insert the data layer variable we just created. Then finally, let's name this variable and click save. Now we need to include this event settings variable in all Google Analytics 4 tags in this container. 
So let's go to tags. Then let's start with the Google tag. And here I will click the pencil, then shared event settings. And in this field, I will select GA4 event settings. So when this tag fires, it will take the parameters and user properties from this variable as well. Then click save. And let's do the same thing for all other GA4 event tags too. In my case, I have one. So I will go to this event tag. And then in the event parameters section, I will select the variable as well. In your case, all of the other settings in event tags might look different. So this is fine. The main idea is that you have some event tag, you have the measurement ID, you have the event name, you maybe have some parameters, but just make sure to include the event settings variable right here. Because inside of this variable, we also stored the pricing plan user property and then click save. And if you have, let's say, other 20, 50, 100 tags, and I mean GA4 event tags, then update them as well. Now let's test if this is working. So click preview. This refreshed the preview mode, and then here on the initialization, my Google tag fired. If I click it, and if I switch to values, then I will see that this is what I sent with the pricing plan. Then if I click on a menu link because that's what I'm also tracking. Then in the preview mode, I will have my menu link click tag fired as well. I can click it. And I also see that this was sent. So we are halfway there. Now let's check if the user property was received properly by Google Analytics 4. Let's go to analytics and then let's go to admin and debug view. And here you should see that your user property is marked in orange. It means that it was just set and this is the value that this event and all subsequent events will get. If I click, for example, on page view, I can check the user properties and I see the value. If I look at the menu link click, then I also have the user property here. So even though technically user properties should automatically apply to all subsequent events, and even if I send some event without a user property, Google Analytics will still apply it. I have noticed that sometimes this does not work always reliable. So my best practice is to include the user property in all my GA4 tags and make sure that the value of the user property is always sent. So far, so good. I'm seeing the user property here. However, there's one step left because if you don't do it, then you will not be able to use this user property in your GA4 reports. So we need to turn this user property into a user scoped custom dimension. We can do that by going to admin and then custom definitions. Here, click create custom dimension, and then let's enter the dimension name. In this case, I will enter like this. You can name it whatever you want. This is just a label for the dimension. Then we must select the user scope because this is a user property and we want to apply it to all subsequent events of the user. So this is why we must select user. And here we have to enter that exact parameter name or the property name that we have in the tag configuration. So it is pricing plan in my case, which looks like this. So pricing underscore plan, I will enter it like that and then click save. Now, if you are wondering why I didn't select the event scope, let me quickly explain the difference between event scope and user scope. Here is how custom dimensions work in event scope. So let's say that I, as a visitor, land on your website and I make one page view, then I go to another page view, and then on a third page view, you're sending some additional data about that page, like page category. So this page category is then configured in Google Analytics 4 as an event scoped custom dimension. So what would happen on the next page? So let's say I go there and on that page, no page category was sent. So since we're talking about the event scope, that dimension is applied only to this particular event. It will not apply to this event or it will not apply to past events. Now, when it comes to user scoped custom dimensions, here's how it works. The same two page views and on these page views, I did not send any user scoped information. Then on this page, I send a pricing plan information. So what would happen on the next page or on the next event that happens on the page view, even if I don't send specifically that, it will still be applied because user scoped custom dimensions are applied to all the subsequent events after 
it was sent. And if let's say on this event, we send another value, then from this moment, that new value will be applied to all the new events. Of course, there are some limitations. For example, if the visitor comes to your site without logging in and it's a different device, then obviously user scoped custom dimensions will not work and that user will be probably treated as a different user. But normally if it is, let's say the same user, the same device, and you just set that user scoped custom dimension once, then it will be applied to all the subsequent events right here. However, as I've said, Google Analytics doesn't always work reliably here when it comes to applying the dimension or in this case, the user scoped property to all subsequent events. That's why we used the event settings variable and we included that variable in all of the tags and I mean all GA4 tags. So once you have configured this, tested this, and you made sure that this is working properly, then go back to Google Tag Manager, click submit and publish these changes. From this moment, your user property will be tracked and you will start getting some data. If you want to see that data in GE4, you will need to wait for at least 24 hours until Google Analytics processes the new data. And that's how you can configure user scoped custom dimensions in GA4. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.